Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, I have my MT-10 Rival that I've had taken apart for a while. I needed a new motor. I broke <laughs> I broke the motor shaft off running into a into my trailer, which I will try to find a link to that and post it up there somewhere. Um, I think I might have put it in a short. It hit so hard that it busted the it brust, busted the shaft off, and then it also bent um, the motor mount. I straightened it up. It looks like it's pretty straight now. It's got, it doesn't have much of a wobble to it no more, so we're hoping that took care of it. Um, looks like it's straight. I mean, this was bowed out pretty good, so... We are going to put a new one in. Plus, I um, that's the rear lights. Plus, it chewed up the the teeth pretty good there on this one section. I probably could have filed it off and straightened it out, but I don't know. It's like I think it was like eight or nine bucks for a new one in a gasket so I just got a new one four screws pop it on pop it off hope that's all it is and then uh, go from there I think I replaced this once already um, M2C does make a carbon fiber motor mount now it won't um, it won't bend it's three mil I think it's three millimeters thick little pricey little pricey and then you got to pay for for um shipping so it's like man it comes out to like 30 bucks it'd be good if you could buy something else with them so you wouldn't pay so much shipping you know but it's like 20 bucks for the part and then 10 bucks to ship it it was like it's like uh <laughs> i mean this isn't cheap either because you got to buy this and this together and it's like 20 20 bucks too but the shipping isn't as much so but i straightened mine out i bought this motor from pocket rc i don't know it was an amazon thing it was pretty cheap it's a brushless power I figured i'd give it a shot and i was looking for um supersonic 36 series uh, you know, I was looking for a five millimeter instead of the what is that one? What is it? Three point one seven five? I think those are what those are called. Okay, so it's the same, same thickness, pretty much. And it has a little heat sink on the back if you want, if you have that kind of ESC to plug into it. And but that's what I was looking for. Bam, five millimeter. So I'm hoping, hoping I have a looks like a 32 pitch, and uh, I don't know what size that is though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The twelve tooth. Um, Oh yeah, plug wires just plug right on in. So, okay, be some long wires. We might cut these off and shorten them up eventually, but for now, we're just gonna leave it like that. Plenty of room. You guys can see in there. It's not hitting the back, so we should be good with that. I'm hoping. Um, we just have to see if we have a 12 tooth or something like that. Cause this is a 3,800 KB and this was a, I want to say it was something, 3,300 KB. So I think a 12 would be good with this thing. It'd be super fast. Mod one gears and here's just pinion gears. So this is more like it. Oh, we might have to get a 
14 twos. Probably work. I don't know if I'm gonna have a little 12 two. 13 tooth. Just knock out that insert. 14. What did I say, guys? A 12. Yeah. Might get stuck with like a 14 tooth. 14 tooth. Fifteen twos. What's this one? Yeah. Fifteen twos. Got a lot of those. These are all small. Don't have a lot of those smaller ones. Another fifteen twos. I try a fourteen twos. That's what I got. That's what I got, guys. That's all I got. Go big with 17 twos. <laughs> I just don't want it to get too hot. Bigger, um, if I would have went lower, then I could have went higher. But since I'm going higher, although it says a bigger can, it's a 36.65. I don't know what can this is. But it's a lot shorter, as you can see. So I think I'm gonna be okay with a a 14 tooth. We'll just have to see what um, what this gear lines up with the best. These each I don't know if you guys know, but each each pinion and spur gear and are all, I don't care if they say 32 pitch, 0.08 mod, what a, you know, each one's a little different than the other. Like, I don't like the way that one fits. And that one fits in there nice. And it looks nice. It goes all the way to the end, almost. So that's a good one. I bet you this is gonna be, uh, I don't think that's a five millimeter shaft. No, it's not. That would have been the perfect one though. Oh well, okay. So it's this one. We're gonna go with a 14 tooth, okay? Let's put all this away. Uh, all the parts that came with it or that I had with it let me pull out my mat I like this little mat right here from uh, CCXRC you can support you know your local or your other you support your local hobby shop first of all guys okay and then um Then try to support each other. Guys are selling stuff that they uh, like. CCXRC sells a lot of little 24 scale stuff. You guys are into that? Um, I think I did lose a. And I hit hard. <laughs> you guys see that? I uh, I jump off the back of my trailer at work, and. Um, I usually, usually fly over pretty good. Yeah, that'll work perfect, guys. Nice little fan, just quick little fan on there. Um, yeah, and I was jumping. And I was jumping it off the back of the trailer, and I, when I hit the ramp, the the front wheels hit and then lifted off the air up in the air. I couldn't steer it no more, and I was. I was holding full trigger, trying to get a, you know, a nice jump for the camera, and it just went straight right into the back of the trailer. Yeah, it was it was pretty brutal. It was, uh, 
one of those things that's <laughs> See if we can get it there. That fits right in there, guys. Look at that. Look at that. It's almost like I measured it for a knot. So if I went there and there, huh? That top one, this top one. Like that. Let's see if these screws. I don't think they're gonna be what we want. They might. Um, yeah, I haven't been out running the cars a whole lot. I hurt my leg, so it's kind of hard to get around a little bit. I mean, I go to work and all that, but. So. I've had these parts for a little bit now. I just got the I just got the gear in. I've been holding off on everything else. Now before I put Loctite and lock it all in, I just want to make sure it's gonna fit in there, which I think it'll fit perfect. It's uh, a little long. I'll have to see if that'll fit in before I lock tight it. I want to make sure that the, the gear is going to fit and all that. So let's pull this out. This is just should just pop out. Yep. Okay. I mean, this, this, if you guys don't have one of these, go buy the new one. Like 300, I think it's on sale right now for $300 again. So I paid for this one uh, year, at least a year ago. Um, yeah, it's well worth the money. I broke this twice and I mean, I, I put new tire, look at these big tires I got on it. I can't believe it hasn't broken something else. But it's, it's all over the internet on YouTube, if you look. Everyone calls it the strongest truck. The 3S. And it just, it's just a beast, guys. You can run it to death. And I do. I take it off and I jump it on the, on the concrete. I mean, I'm not doing... 50 foot in the air, but my trailer is about three feet high, four feet high, and I jump it off the dock, which is about, I don't know, four and a half, five feet high, I think, at work. So, so yeah. And then we'll get this taking it apart and, and some thick oil in there so I can do uh, some wheelies real good and easy but I should just be able to pop this one off and get my rag over here so I don't get anything too dirty. Okay. Pin. Get off of there. <laughs> and that should pull out. I should be able to pull this off with the rubber washer overing in there. Pop this one out. Let's 
So this goes in there like so. If you look, you've got little dimples in there. I think that's where those go, huh? No? Maybe not. I don't know what those little spots are for. But there you go. That pops in there like that. And we're going to put these in. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but... Halloween weekend, so the weekend before Halloween, everybody's out having little parties and stuff like that. Yeah. There she goes, guys. It's like brand new. You can see where that little nipple and this nipple, and there's a hole here and a hole here, so they did line up. So that's what those holes were for. So if you get them close, it'll fall right into place. Voila! These are nice. It just kind of lines it up just for you so you don't have to mess around with it. And keep an eye on, um, there is a, a little rubber washer inside here too to keep the drive shaft from sliding around. All right, let's put this back in. I'm going to see, um, make sure it's straight when it spins, right? And one of those is a little stripped. One of those is a little stripped. It's not bad. It holds a little bit. So hopefully it'll. Might have to replace that eventually. But 
Like I said, this thing is just a straight, straight basher, guys. I'm missing the washer spacer here. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me I forgot that? Man. Thought you guys were helping me. <laughs> there you go, electric here. And bam! Okay, just like that, it's on there. <laughs> okay. So, we will go get our mess out of the way. And this is, truck is also a good starter truck for somebody. You can run a 2S, 3S on here. So, but the reason why I say that is because there's no moving parts on the inside of this. The drive shaft's all hidden inside. As you can see, everything's kind of hidden. So, you know, the kids won't get their fingers stuck in something or or messing around with, you know what I mean? So that's a good a good thing for them. Let's make sure this wire is up and out of the way. And plus it keeps the battery cables and and all that kind of stuff out of the way, right? part is getting it back together because of the oh. all right there we go guys we got it back together i uh had a little issues getting this put back in together which way to put it together so you put the uh dip in first and then you slide everything else in and line it up it was easier that way um i didn't realize the camera was off so i got a couple screws back in holding it together it does look like this is a little Let's see if I can get a little bit more light on here for you guys. There we go. Spur gear does look like it's a little, um, a little bent, like maybe the disc bent or something. It's hard to tell, but when I roll on it, you can see it move back and forth. I know there's a couple stripped out gears and or screws in it. Um, they still feel like. You can keep spinning it, but when you get it to that certain spot, you know how you can feel that little tightness get into it, and it still feels like that. So I think we'll be all right with that. Um, should be anyways. So let's see if this motor. Let's see how this motor is going to look in here. So it's going to go like this. And that's going to slide out. Yeah, that'll be. Can't tell if it's sitting at an angle or not. Looks like it might be. like when it goes down to tighten it up it, it sits up a little bit might have to grind that chassis out a little bit guys looks like the motor's sitting up because of the chassis 
the chassis wasn't long enough for it. Which, um, we got a pin. So you can see the, the dip in the motor here. And I believe, I well, can't really see the line there either. Let's do that again. Make sure I don't go too, too far. Okay, so it was that mark. So there's the mark we made. I don't think I can see that or not. Yes, see why? There's a mark right there. That's where the motor comes out to the edge of that. So, it's kind of a bummer. You can tell it's hitting hitting that spot and for it to be level it needs to come way out here so it wouldn't be in the air so much but let's put let's tighten this up Afraid with it being up like that, it's gonna make it's gonna make the gear mesh very hard to get straight. And you can see how bent that is. So I'm gonna try to get a Dremel in there, guys, and Dremel that out. Dremel it down a little bit. Um, I know it's not really what you want to do to a chassis, but I was I thought of that and I thought maybe oh, I was small enough to do that. There was enough room in here when I bought the motor, but I guess not. Um, I was trying to be cheap. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't pay. I mean, yeah, in the long run it will. I mean, this little thing, right? I mean, this had a ton of room. I didn't realize this was so long. That's all right. We'll get it. We'll get the Dremel out. A little grinding. Um, so this will probably be like a second part, guys. I know I've gone over, way over. So um, I got the spur gear back in. Nice new spur gear ready to go. I do have the motor now. Um, the ESC, the original ESC did uh, crap out on me. So I got this Spectrum one. They're dirt cheap. You can get them from Jenny's RC. Um, dirt cheap. So that's where I get my ESCs from. These, I consider them throwaways. Um, they last a good year or two and then they'll probably burn out. Hopefully it won't, you know. Hopefully it won't. And Spectrum, the ESCs don't last too long for some reason. Um, they just get worn out. It doesn't, uh, sometimes it pays to go to straight to Hobby Wing and get one of the good Hobby Wing ones. I've had a couple of those for a few years now and I've never had any issues with them, knock on wood. Um, but uh, yeah. So there you go, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and stay tuned for part number two.